is a very unique place in the Quran. And in this place, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions a certain category of people. There are certain attributes, certain personality traits that these people have. And these traits are so important and so powerful that Allah mentions the beginning of it is the mention of Jannah. And in the end of this passage, there's the mention of Jannah again. And in between there are these people. So the mention of these people is sandwiched between the mention of Jannah. The beginning of it is Jannah and the end of it is Jannah. SubhanAllah, who are these people? الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ This is the first attribute of the people of taqwa, he says. Those who spend in times that are easy and in times that are difficult. Of course here, spending implies spending for the sake of Allah. And what is it that they spend? Allah didn't say amwalahum here. He didn't say amwal. He says amwal and wealth and assets in other places. In this passage, he, meant, he didn't mention it. It includes wealth. But it includes time. It includes your youth. It includes your energies. It includes your priorities. It includes your planning. You give that up for the sake of Allah. Now listen to the second one. It, maybe you could say, I don't know, I don't have anything to give. The next attribute, all of us can manage. وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْظِ Allah says those who swallow their anger. By using the words, الْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْظِ Allah Azza wa has illustrated that we have to have such a good control over our temper that when you do come across something that makes you upset, then when you do get into a disagreement with someone entirely obnoxious, as upset as that makes you, not only do you have to be quiet, you can't even show the anger on your face. You have to swallow it as though it's not even there. The imagery is incredible. And the ism fa'il is used. In English we call it the active participle. Simply speaking, what that means is, they do this all the time. They do it all the time. There are all these opportunities to get angry. Little things, little things at work, little things at the home. Easily the, the wife gets angry at the husband. Very easily the husband gets angry at the wife. Little, little things make you, make you angry at the children. Learn to swallow your anger. Become a person that perseveres through these things. If little things annoy us, if little, little things get angry at, at you know, make us upset, how do we expect Allah Azza wa to forgive our big sins? So, وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْظِ And the second, the next attribute, وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ Very difficult. They forgive people out of love. First of all, most people say, Brother, I know that was a nice khutbah, and I know I should forgive, but my situation is special. You don't understand, this guy was really messed up. He doesn't deserve forgiveness. By the way, you never forgive someone who deserves it. By definition, forgiveness means to give it to somebody who doesn't deserve it. And you're not forgiving for them. You're doing it for yourself because you want to be in this list. You want to be among these people that are considered muttaqeen. That's why they forgive people. And here it implies also out of love of Allah. One thing about forgiving people because it seems to be a big problem for Muslims. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, probably few of, there, there can't be any comparison between the love he has for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and anybody else. On top of this, his daughter is married to the Messenger of Allah. So not only does he love him because he is the Messenger of Allah, he loves him because he's family. His daughter is accused. This is not just anybody's daughter. This is not just any woman. This is the mother of the believers. So accusing her is an attack not just on her, but on her husband and on the deen of Islam. And his daughter is accused by someone who he used to give some allowance to. This enormous, enormous, you know, attack. And here we find Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, as how big this man's heart is, he exacts his anger by discontinuing the allowance. That's all he does. Allah sets such a high standard for him. He tells him, he gives him advice in the Quran, فَلْيَعْفُوا Then he should forgive out of love. وَلْيَصْفَحُوا They should turn the page. أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Wouldn't you love that Allah would forgive you? Now listen to this carefully. Imagine this scale, okay? There's a scale. On the one hand, there's the anger of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu against this man. It's fair. He, sh he deserves to be punished. But on the other hand, Allah gives him either your anger weighs more or your love of being forgiven by Allah weighs more. I'll give you the choice. The next time you get upset, you and I get upset, remind ourselves, is the offense that, you, that has made you upset, does it compare to the anger and the situation of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu? Does it compare? And does it compare that if you forgive out of love of Allah, and out of, in a loving fashion, if you forgive, then what Allah is offering you is your forgiveness. Is your anger and your revenge worth more? Or is the forgiveness of Allah that He's offering you worth more? 
But the one I want to conclude with, and I only have a couple of minutes to do so, is something very peculiar. You would think I'm going to keep going on with a list of good deeds. Good things that these muttaqeen do. The next ayah is about bad deeds. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ Those who did something lewd, shameless, vulgar. Whenever they committed an act that was shame and vulgar, in any way, shape or form, فَاحِشَةً Not الفاحشة, but فَاحِشَةً Any act of shamelessness. Whatever shameless thing you did. These people, the muttaqeen are being described that they may fall into this trap too. They're not immune. They're human beings. It might happen. Or they wronged themselves in any other way. They didn't wake up for the prayer. They didn't give their zakat. They didn't keep family ties. They wronged themselves in any other way. Allah is describing the muttaqeen like this. Why? Because they will make mistakes. But then there's something they do after the mistake. And this is the point I want to make and I'm done inshaAllah ta'ala. He says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ They remembered Allah. I want to tell you about a trick of shaitan. When you go late to work, and your boss is angry at you because you're late, and lots of people work at your office, you know what you do? You avoid eye contact and sneak into your cubicle. You don't want to, sit, you don't want to face him. When you, when you have a bad report card, and you go home to your family, you're in 6th, 7th grade, you got a bad report card, you sneak into the house. There's no, Asalaamu Alaikum, I'm home. You sneak in and you kind of go and you pass out, you go to sleep. When you disappoint someone, you avoid contact with them. It's natural. In this case, when we do something shameless, when we wrong ourselves, who have we disappointed? Allah Azza wa Jal. So naturally, shaitan takes advantage of this. He comes to you and me and he says, you're gonna go pray now, you hypocrite. You do this shameless thing, and now you wanna go attend a class? Now you wanna go do, you know, ibadah? So this person says to themselves, yeah, I shouldn't go pray because I'm two-faced. Shaitan takes advantage. He distances you from Allah. And we're embarrassed to go before Allah Azza wa Jal. But the true muttaq, he does something wrong. He does something wrong. And immediately, what does he do? He remembers Allah. فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ Then they asked Allah to forgive for their sins. And the word for sins here, dhunub, comes from dhanab actually, a tale. That which you're not proud of. That, that which humiliates you. Something you did that you're not proud of. And they ask Allah to forgive those embarrassing things that they did. وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Who's gonna forgive sins if not Allah? When you and I disobey Allah, where are we gonna go? Where else is there to go? Who do we turn to? We don't, we don't have anywhere else to turn. So even if we disappoint our Lord, even if we fall short of the standards He set for us, the true muttaq, the hopeful of Jannah, He never loses hope in Allah. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah.